Hey, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we're going to try something different. I'm not sure who we're going to channel. By the time I'm done with this video, I'll have it in the thumbnail. But right now, I don't know. Is anybody's guess? Okay, we're going to surprise. I'm going to have a surprise guest. Okay. All right, so I'm going to ask my archangels to kind of step in. I work with uh, many archangels a lot. They're non-denominational to me. They're very diverse. They expand all cultures, all continents, all time and all space. So they show up in a lot of variety of ways. Right now I see Michael, who's a great archangel for protection, for truth, and connecting to integrity. And also my good friend, Archangel Gabriel, his jazz hands cannot be missed. Do not, do not miss his jazz hands. Oh yes, Archangel Gabriel's for communication and connection and a great, great entertainer, Archangel, for me. So thanks you guys, appreciate you here. All right, so who are you gonna surprise me with today? Man or woman? Man. Okay. I don't know anything about that one. There are several. <laughs> <laughs> um, I see one that just transitioned. I see another one that people have recommended. Thank you. Yeah, I see some. I guess they're backstage waiting to be called. Guys, don't hold your breath. You know, I don't like to channel people right away as soon as they cross over, like right after they died. We got to let that kind of settle down first. I'm not a hearse chaser. Although from time to time, I will just be so connected that I have to talk to them. So I do. It's a... It's, it's a uh, artist's choice. How about that? Right? It's my choice. My choice. I'm the artist. I'm the channeler, right? Okay, so it's a man. U.S., United States, but feels as though he is connected overseas as well, so maybe not born in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Oh, 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 I haven't seen you forever, <laughs> George Michael. <laughs> Hi, honey, it's nice to see you. Oh my gosh, I wish I had my computer because someone submitted great questions to ask you. And I, I just, I love your energy, but I just never know what to, to ask because we just kind of sit together and it just feels nice. <laughs> it feels good. Oh, honey, it's nice to see you. Yes, I know, I know, I know. It's okay. He's like, oh, it's so okay, it's okay, it's okay. And so why, what do we owe your guest appearance today? He says, well, I tell you, I have seen you have done some really great work. Oh, he's going to make me emotional. I don't even think I have to. Oh, yeah, I do have a tissue. Good. In case I need it, I got a tissue. Um <laughs> Because of your work recently, your great work with charity organizations, which I have done in my work twice within a week's time, donated almost $500 to charities, two different charities. Thanks to you, those of you who, who purchased your participation in my small group work, thank you for that. In November, we did awesome. Actually, it was end of, this, end of October, early November. Thank you, you ladies know who you are. Thank you, love you. I was hoping, he says, I was hoping that you would uh, consider doing something for animals. I have done animals. I have done, I have done a group work, group work where I've donated to um, an animal shelter specifically for cats on behalf of Freddie Mercury. That was last February. You guys were going to have to, and I've been thinking about that for February again to, to bring that back around and do it again in February this year. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. So yes. Did you have others that you were thinking of? Particularly the animals. He's saying particularly the animals, animal charities. Are you thinking like rescues or are you thinking like um, shelters and things? He's saying placement and any organization for the ethical treatment of animals. Oh, 
Oh, interesting. So, um, okay. So, do you are you raising some concerns, Mr. George Michael from the afterlife? Are you raising some concerns about laboratory testing and related maybe to medicine, you guys? Because right now we're in a huge like meta. You've seen this, right? Right? That it's very yes. Yes, we know. He says, yes, we know. The rest of us over here, yes, we know, we know, we know. He says, it can, it can seem like a dark time. It can seem like a dark time. And then he says, but we can't forget those who bring us the most comfort. And sometimes it's, those, it's our animals that do. He says, it's our animals. He's, he's saying for himself, you know, I didn't have children. He says, you know, I didn't have children. They were like my children. They were like my family. And... He says, um, I so appreciated that love. I appreciate that love. Many of you will be able to relate to that because you have animals that you love that are like, they're complete. And I have animals myself. I have dogs. I have four dogs. And they are members of the family. They are, they are our family. And as short of lifespan as they have compared relatively compared to humans, they give us so much in that short amount, so much, you guys. Like I have a sweet, sweet dog in the afterlife. Her name is Molly. We called her, I called her, Mimo Molly. And I would say it, I'd actually sing to her. <laughs> oh, I can see her. I can see her. Now, I'm not a pet communicator by trade or anything like that. But a spirit is a spirit, a soul is a soul. And so I certainly, I don't specialize in that area, you guys, but I certainly connect. <laughs> As you, well, you can too. Thank you, George, for bringing her in. It's so weird to call him George because it just doesn't fit for me. I don't want to call him George. There's a different name that I would use, but I can't pronounce it properly and I don't want to be disrespectful to other um, cultures. He says, I love you, Bridget. I love you. I love you too. It's been a long time. But like I said, um, there was someone, one of you, so whoever it is that is watching this right now on Above Life channel and screaming at your phone, if that's where you're watching on, <laughs> it's me, it's me, she's saying, I'm sure. Thank you for your, I remembered your questions. They're awesome. I remember getting them, but I, I didn't expect for Mr. George Michael to be making his appearance today. So... I'm sorry that I don't have them to ask. If I had my computer in here, I would have just looked them up. I'm, next time I have to be better prepared for the surprise. <laughs> so do you have, um, that is such a sweet, sweet, sweet thing. Especially, okay, so I just want one more thing about the animals. Because during this time when we are home much more, those animals are making, helping keep some of us very sane. And, and so lots of love to the animals and lots of love to the animal lovers out there. In fact, if you're watching this video and you are an animal lover and you want to honor one of your um, dear, dear animal friends, go ahead and put their names in the comments below. Okay, go ahead and do that. Like I would put my Mimo Molly in the comments below to honor her memory. And I might put my doggies now, Diamond, we call her Dimey sometimes, um, or Mindy, and Louie. His technical name is Louie Louie, and Riley, our red lab, and, and Riley, I have a great, you know, I have a great story about that, about how Molly ended up helping us get Riley and how part of Molly's essence is with Riley and her body so that she can continue to watch over my children because that's what Molly did. <laughs> she was this big, beautiful silver Weimaraner and she was gentle and she was earth energy and she was mother energy and she was totally conditional, unconditional divine love. That's what she was. And that's what she taught me. And so she, part of her essence, came back and helped us get Riley, rescue Riley, our red lab. And I call her Reroll Riley. And I have a little song for her, too. <laughs> I'm not going to sing it. I'll spare you for that. But if I ever do that share about my pet, about Molly helping us with Riley, if I ever do a story time with that, I'll, I'll sing you. I'll sing it to you. And then you can laugh at me. <laughs> That's okay. We'll be laughing together. You got to be silly and got to be willing to be silly. Huh? 
He says, it's true they bring out the best in you. They, they let you, so George is saying this, George Michael is saying this, animals help you, they, they let you let your guard down. They let you trust. They let you open your heart, he says. They don't hurt you like, like people can. Oh, that, that hits home. That cuts right through the heart, you guys. So you feel that? Sounds like you're speaking from experience. I am. He says, I am. You know, in your human life, there was some, um, there was some uncertainty or some question about the loyalty of your uh, most recent partner. I don't know how to explain the connection to him because it doesn't really feel like you're together, but I think you kind of were. So I don't know if it was on again, off again, on again, off again, on again, off again. But I feel like he, I think that many people would feel like he rode your coattails and that he, um, I know that there's some stuff because I feel some buzz about it. So I don't know if I saw things about this a long, like a while ago, you guys, not recently. I'm recording this in November, um, November 9th, 2020, by the way timestamp that and I remember though that there's some stuff about like if he was didn't do right by you or if he was like rude to your family or whatever it was after your death or something or he wanted more or he wanted something or being feeling entitled to something but it doesn't feel like you were married no he says no um and there's like anger, I think, around this or unresolved stuff. He says, you know, and he's reminding me there often is around a celebrity death. There often is. When you don't expect it, there often is. Yes, and I think that you, I, we've talked before, George. We, you have a playlist. George Michael has a playlist here on Above Life Channel. So look at that if you're a fan and you haven't. If you're watching this video first, it's going to seem weird. So you need to watch the other ones with him. <laughs> I should have probably said that in the beginning, but to give some background, because now we're just talking casually, you know. But it seems to me that the that you died of heart, something with your heart, like heart failure, something with your heart. And there was speculation about like drugs or depression or all that. Um, it feels like you literally died of a broken heart. Like, and I know you were really close to your mom and I know in the afterlife you're with your mom. Can you talk about that a little bit? About that, why we would feel or your fans would feel like you were sad when you died or had this like feeling of being broken. Can you talk about that just a little bit to, to give us some encouragement, either from the past life perspective, what you know now, or actually when you were alive and living the last few months of your life? He's saying to me, I was, it's true, I was on medication. And he said, it did affect my weight. He's saying that to me. Did that bother you? He says, he says, at the risk of sounding vain, yes, it bothered me. Of course it bothered me. More so because, he says, but more because my body, I totally get this. He's like showing me that his body was uncomfortable. Like, when you sit down, it doesn't feel right. And like your hips can be sore and your knees, especially the knee, that right knee. Yes, he's like giving me, cause I had this same experience when I had gained some weight a while back. My knee, my right knee would just bug me. And so now literally he just pointed to my knee and said, it's like, it, it puts this pressure on your joints and it, it's really, it's just uncomfortable. You just don't feel good because you feel like you're trying, everything is like an effort, you know? And did you know that you had heart issues so that your heart was a problem? He says, I feel, I, I think the connection to the heart, the physical, he says, you're talking about the human heart, the physical heart part with the weight gain, he said, and the stress, it, it feels as though the heart could be damaged. Not, not as healthy, he says, not as healthy as it could be. Not as healthy as it could be. He's making me feel like the medication caused his death or medication, some kind of medicine caused his death. So, but it was helped along by other things, side effects of stuff, you guys. That's kind of how it feels, like side effects. Interesting. Um, so, can you talk about the, that broken heart feeling? And he's like weaving it together, like literally I see it coming, like coming together, like, 
like there's a one half, another half, and then you can kind of see in between, like, but there's like, it's like weaving, being woven together. He says, my, my, mo my mom had a lot to do with that. My mom had a lot to do with that. She kept me whole, you know, she kept me sane. She kept me grounded. But isn't it true though that you had a hard time like with your sexuality and not being able to really be yourself? I mean, was some of part of you afraid that you're gonna be rejected by your family or by your mother and we, even though you were so, so close? I think every, every child fears disappointing, he says, is afraid of disappointing your parents, you know, disappointing your family. You don't wanna let anyone down, he says. You, do, you really don't wanna let anyone down. And um, I didn't expect to be some, uh, a superstar or a fam big famous person. I just, I knew that I loved to sing and I loved to perform and I wanted to be just doing that, you know. He sang 24 seven doing that. It's hard to be on stage and be giving your all. This is I'm I'm um, not using his exact words, but this this is he's telling me the story and I'm retelling it to you. Is what's happening right now? I'm feeling it through the heart chakra. That's called clairsentience for you guys, just so you know. And it's it's when you're an empath and you can feel that energy. And clairsentience is one of the psychic gifts or ways to channel or connect. When you're on stage, he's showing me when you're on stage, a lot of yellow energy, which is solar plexus or spirit chakra, which means you're in your purpose, you're living your purpose. It's hard to do that fully when you're holding a part of yourself back. You're trying to give it your all and be all out there, but then you know you're holding back. And he says it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Like it doesn't, it doesn't work out well trying to do that, trying to be out there, but then holding back and be out there and holding back. He says it results in some really kind of impulsive, he says, he kind of, he literally touches his face. He's like touching his face, kind of impulsive decisions. He says it, it creates this, you're holding back and then you're out there and you're holding back and out there. And then sometimes you just, just do stuff. Just, you just do it, even though, you know, it's not the best choice for you. Are you talking about drugs, medicine, drugs, alcohol? What are you talking about? It's like checkbox all the above and particularly drugs like I don't know if he utilized or abused drugs but it feels like there's some kind of a drug thing involved here not deep intense drugs but enough like it could be an ecstasy it could be maybe a cocaine I'm not sure it doesn't really feel like that though it doesn't feel like the white powder it could be like just like a like marijuana or something which I mean that's like whatever and but it doesn't seem like heroin or anything. I don't think so. I can't quite tell. He's not showing me everything. Like, I feel like, yeah, there's some impulsive stuff that I've done. Like I might've tried drugs or I might've done this or might've done. Um, something about being with a model. Was he with a model? Did he date somebody that was a model? And he says, for show, like to keep up, you have to keep up the, um, it's like, I wanna say keep up appearances, but he's not saying it that way. He's saying you have to keep up the, the persona, the, the mark, he said it's for marketing. It's the marketing image, it's the brand. And, and it, you get really, he said, it gets really confusing with who am I as a person and who am I as a, the performer that the public person that everybody gets an ownership of, you know? I've heard that before in other channeling sessions about that, this difference between who am I as a person versus who am I as a public icon, person, performer, entertainer, where everybody feels like they own you or they, they, they pay for a ticket to a concert and, or they buy an album and they own you, they get a part of you in that. I've heard that before from several other people, especially musicians, I've heard that. Yeah, he says, well, it's, it's true. It's, he says, I'm not, I'm not trying to make excuses up or anything like that. I just, you, you asked about the heart. And he says, it's, it's very personal to him, you guys. Very private, very personal. And he's saying, I didn't want to disrespect my family. I'm seeing a lot of overlap with Freddie Mercury and his family and George Michael and his family. But the connection or the bond between George and his mother is real really, really, really strong, very important. Yeah, he says, yeah, she's like my healer in the afterlife too. 
You know, she's my healer. Yeah. And there are dogs all around him. I think he's trying to prove a point. Like he's trying to get me to commit. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so like to prevent animal cruelty or things like that. I'll think about it. I'll think about something that I could do to, to help honor that request of why you came forward. Okay. Is there anything else in particular that we should talk about or that you'd like to share? He's showing me something about find, find the love or get the love where you can get it. And then he shows me the animals, like again, very loyal, very trustworthy, very truthful, very honest. And I'm getting this feeling again of like referring to his most recent lover, boyfriend. I don't know what you call him because boyfriend doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right to call him that. Um, I know you guys were living together. I think you were anyway. I think so. Were they? I think so. It feels like they were. But I'm, again, it feels like not even the same, like different levels or on again, off again and all that stuff. It doesn't feel like that person that he was in a relationship with was faithful. That's what it feels like. That the person that he was in a relationship with near the end of his life, at the end of his life, was not faithful is how it feels. That's what it feels, allegedly. Okay. Um, and I feel like he's riding your coattails. I do not like this person. And I think that the people around you were kind of cold, not very warm on him either, because he was kind of riding your coattails. Like, I don't think he was a, a love of your life kind of a thing. Had, did you have one? That's a person, very personal question, you guys, isn't it? George Michael, did you have a love of your life? Except for, and all he, he shows me is an image of his mom. That's the only true relationship I've ever really had with a person, he says, the person. He's showing me his mom and his sister in the afterlife. Family, this is family for him. Mm. All right. Did you smoke? Because all of a sudden I see smoke and like affecting my vocal cords or something. Like not having my voice not change and not be quite right. Looks like smoking. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to wrap this one up. Hey, I'm Bridget from Above Life Channel. We've been chatting with a surprise guest to me. Surprise to you it won't be because you'll see it on the thumbnail. George Michael from The Afterlife. And if you are a George Michael fan, make sure you don't leave Above Life Channel until you check out that playlist because you will find more conversations with George in The Afterlife. So thanks so much for being here. Thanks for surprising me. That's wonderful. He's like, that's the only way I could come in, Bridget. That's the only, he's like, that's the only way I knew I could get you to talk to me <laughs> because I, I'm sorry. I, I have to tell the, these guys this. I just, he just feels so sweet and so loving. And all I would do is just sit here and be quiet and feel his energy and that's it. And that's not great for YouTube. <laughs> that's not great for Above Life Channel. Like we need to have dialogue, discussion, conversation, but he's almost, it's not that you're shy, you're just really feely. Like you just give information through the heart and through the way you feel. That's how he communicates, it's through the way he feels. So if you are a fan of George Michael or you want to channel and connect with George Michael, heart space, use your heart. That means empath, empath energy, that means sensitive people, that means clairsentience, that means feel, what are you feeling? So as a result of my conversation with him, you might want to even go back and watch this video again, get out your own notebook and feel what you feel before I say stuff. Like when I'm pausing, feel what you're feeling from him. And that's your message, that's your connection, that's your practice, okay? Especially if you're a fan, this will be easier for you to feel his, the feeling, okay? And then write down what you get, because that's, that's the point, that's part of the point of Above Life Channel, to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope and to encourage you to live your life. It's your life after all, it's yours, it's yours. So live it, just live it. Thanks for watching. Thanks, George, for being here.
I was so lucky, yeah, you surprised me.